Today I will be reading Johnny Depp's birth chart and explaining some other astrological influences on the trial between him and Amber Heard. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you don't know me. My name is Nina. I am a Western tropical astrologer and life coach. To book a session with me, you can go to ninabastrology.com. Today I will be reading Johnny Depp's chart. This trial has really uh, absorbed my attention big time. I know I'm not alone in that, but it has been a fascinating ordeal to me for a number of reasons. One of those reasons being my astrological insight into the whole situation as a professional astrologer. So because this is something so interesting to me, I had a lot of different ways that I thought about approaching a video surrounding this issue. And so I took a quick little temperature check over on my Instagram to see what you all might be interested in seeing from me in terms of astrological coverage on the situation. The options that I gave out in terms of content that you might want to see from me were a reading of Johnny Depp's birth chart, a relationship karma interpretation between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and also some insights into the transits that are affecting this trial. So what won out was just a birth chart rating on Johnny Depp, but I also got a lot of DMs suggesting that I cover a little bit of everything. And honestly, I was pretty inclined to do that. That's why I put out the poll in the first place because I was interested in covering this topic on all angles. Now, the reason why I didn't have an option there of reading Amber Heard's birth chart is because she doesn't have her birth time available on the internet, which also means that we don't have a complete picture available of their Davison relationship chart, which is what I use to read and interpret relationship karma. So I will be mostly focusing on Johnny Depp's birth chart in this video, but as I sort of relate what I see to what is going on in the trial, I'll also be bringing up things that I see in that Davison relationship chart in terms of planetary positions and aspects. There is no ascendant or house placements that can possibly show up on that Davison relationship chart. And I'll also just be going over some interesting transits that are affecting this trial and Johnny in particular. Now, I will say this trial has been very entertaining to me, very entertaining to a lot of people out there. And it's been fascinating to see the public reaction. It's also quite a sad situation. It's a sad trial. It's also a little sad to see how some people have reacted to this whole ordeal. In a lot of ways, this whole thing is kind of like a car crash that's hard to look away from. The situation, the case itself, there's a lot of, you know, dramatic, traumatic things getting brought up. And the public reaction has certainly been interesting. The memification of this whole thing, I think it's really exposed this human difficulty with not seeing things as totally black and white. And unfortunately, the worry is like, you know, because of the intense, strong black and white feelings towards Amber Heard, that there can similarly promote also more of this black and white attitude towards other public cases that come up concerning domestic violence or intimate partner violence. And also it's been honestly really disturbing to see people react to the mental health side of this all and using Amber Heard's diagnoses to villainize her. And the fear is that people will continue this trend of being doubtful towards women who bring up allegations of domestic or intimate partner violence. The fear is that there's further stigmatization of mental health. And I think that's just a result of 
the very black and white way that people are sort of, a lot of people are looking at the situation. I just want to bring up sort of a little bit of my take on the whole thing because uh, just for you to get an idea of where my mind is at as I read and interpret these things. I try to be non-judgmental, react to things with empathy. Of course there is a lot of empathy that I have towards Johnny Depp. There's a lot of frustration that I do have towards Amber Heard from what I am seeing of her as not being a very credible witness, but at the same time I have a lot of empathy also for Amber Heard because she is a victim at the very least of herself. And in general it seems like no matter what the outcome is in terms of like the defamation case and no matter who is to blame more than anyone else. It seems to have been a really toxic relationship and a really sad situation overall where everyone essentially has been and in a lot of ways continues to be hurt. So I'm gonna just do my best to be delicate as I interpret everything that I see here in these astrological patterns. Now before we really jump into the nitty gritty of this video, I don't really have a cute or clever segue for this, but this video is in partnership with Ana Luisa Jewelry. Ana Luisa is a big time friend to the channel and they wanted to offer me an opportunity to give you a personalized discount of 10% off their entire site with the code MININA10, like me. Nina 10. Like I said, Ana Luisa is a consistent friend to this channel and that's because I really appreciate their style and their sustainability in their jewelry. And so with them having offered me partnerships over the years, I really am starting to have a hefty Ana Luisa jewelry collection and I wanted to show you guys some of the new pieces that they sent over to me. This necklace that I'm actually wearing right now, I got in my first partnership with Ana Luisa and now a year or so later they also sent me over the matching earrings so this is the Lev necklace and these are the Jessica earrings in addition to the Jessica earrings Ana Luisa also sent over the Hannah hibiscus blue earrings for me this is something a little different from my personal jewelry collection, which is also mostly Ana Luisa jewelry. I really am a fan of classic gold jewelry, but this is a little bit more fun and springtime with an extra pop of color and a floral design. I really love them. And the last piece that Ana Luisa sent over to me are the Charisse hoop earrings, which are these gorgeous, a little bit more statement, a little larger hoops for me with some pearls on them. Like I said, I am a huge fan of Ana Luisa. It is truly one of my biggest honors that I am able to work with them so often. I love the styles available on their website. They are a luxury brand without the luxury markup. So you're getting something very quality at a reasonable price. They are a 100% carbon neutral company. So like I said, if you would like to check out Ana Luisa and get some pieces for yourself, you can use my code MIMINA10. Now let's hop right back in to this mega reading. So let's start here with Johnny Depp's chart and sort of the high points that I see as I look at it. So first impressions that I get is first of all, like this really looks like the chart of someone who would become rich and famous. <laughs> Leo rising is an indicator of someone who would be a confident performer. And in terms of markers of success, particularly infamy, it's always promising to see a concentration of planets in the 10th and 11th house, especially personal planets. And what we've got going on here with Johnny is a midheaven in Taurus with Venus conjunct Mercury in Taurus in the 10th house and then his son in Gemini in the 11th house. So this just in general sort of shows a popularity and an attractiveness to him. Uh, 
positive presentation of his public persona. He has Taurus ruling the 10th house. People with Taurus midheavens tend to be quite motivated to pursue a career and a life really of stability and also a life and a career in the arts. Because Venus is ruled by Taurus, he does also have his Venus in its domicile sign of Taurus in the 10th house, pretty promising for prosperity in his career. Now contrasting that to his fourth house in Scorpio with Neptune conjunct Lilith in Scorpio in there, it really does show a rags to riches story. Maybe not necessarily like literally rags as in he was poor or destitute, but possibly. The Scorpio fourth house can definitely be a difficult placement. Scorpio is the sign of death, also regeneration, transformation, but when you're looking at that kind of sign of regeneration, transformation, death, really intense change in the fourth house, which is the house of home, our roots, our foundation, you can see how that can prove to be a little chaotic or a little destabilizing to have a sign that represents so much change and overturn and dramatically so in that foundational house that also rules family. Then put Lilith in there, and Lilith is uh, not the most pleasant energy. Lilith is representative of the dark feminine. She is an energy that is quite quote unquote toxic, you can say. There's an obsessive nature to Lilith. There's a controlling nature to Lilith. There is even a perverted nature to Lilith. So with Lilith in the fourth house, these themes of darkness, of control, even of perversion might have been present in Johnny's home life growing up. And it can speak to particularly a difficult relationship with woman based on a difficult relationship with the mother figure, which in watching the trial, we know that that is the case with Johnny Depp. Another part of the chart that can show information on someone's relationship to their mother is the moon. Johnny's moon is in Capricorn, which is considered to be the moon in its detriment. The moon does not like to be in Capricorn. It's quite a restrictive place to have the moon, meaning that Johnny might not have felt a lot of space to be able to express his emotions, to feel comforted as he expressed his emotions, might have felt a restriction in terms of the nurture that he received from his mother. One thing that can definitely be interpreted as a positive for the moon in Capricorn is that because the motto of Capricorn is I use, Capricorn is very determined and motivated to sort of make the most of whatever is handed to them and be productive no matter what, to have the moon in that sign can indicate the natives desire to use their emotions. And with his moon actually being in the sixth house, which in part rules work and the work environment, it does make sense that he would move into a career that very much relies on him using his emotions in a practical way. So yeah, you can definitely interpret that to be a positive of the moon in Capricorn. Of course, there is also sort of like a detrimental side to doing that, to where there is a difficulty with just being sort of passive in the face of your emotions, just letting your emotions sink in and be and experience them for the sake of experiencing them when you're constantly thinking like, I need to turn this into an opportunity for my own growth, or I need to make something of this, or else there's sort of like no point to feeling or processing. In terms of aspects to this moon in the sixth house in Capricorn, it's quite interesting and actually can definitely show some insights into Johnny Depp's struggle with addiction. 
So breaking it down, he has his moon in Capricorn squaring his Jupiter in, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little distracted by a little chicken up there, uh, <laughs> squaring his Jupiter in Aries in the ninth house, which is his moon's most unharmonious aspect. It is also trine his neptune in scorpio in the fourth house it's sextile his mars in virgo which sits in his first house at the very end of his first house and it also is in conjunct his ascendant in leo so i'll actually talk about that first when a planet is in conjunct another planet or some point in the birth chart it means that these two things uh just completely don't get along not in a necessarily like tense way not in a way that these two things have conflict but they really have nothing to do with one another take for example this capricorn moon and this leo rising there's nothing that the sign of capricorn and leo have in common leo is masculine it's fire it's fixed and capricorn is feminine it's earth it's cardinal there's no meeting point of these two signs. So for Johnny, his moon, his emotional expressions, his relationship to his emotions, his relationship even to his divine feminine, all of that does not have a place in his identity, what his ascendant represents. It can be difficult to impossible really for him to integrate these two things and i just think that's interesting because it is sort of being shown in the way that he is behaving in court you know there are some pretty traumatic and difficult things being brought up uh, emotional things certainly coming to the surface and yes he is i'm not saying that he hasn't like <laughs> displayed his emotional nature. We've even seen him cry on the stand, but we've also seen some pretty incongruent emotional displays considering the content that is being presented. You know, we've seen him sort of smirk and laugh and giggle in a way that can be a little confusing or off-putting. And that may be at least in part attributed to the fact that he as a person has a difficulty integrating his emotional experience into the way that he expresses himself. Now, it's not the case that anyone and everyone who has this particular aspect is totally and completely incapable of accurately expressing their emotions or integrating the way that they feel into the way that they express themselves, especially when you take progress charts into consideration and whatnot. But this might be something that throughout Johnny's life has been a theme, a difficulty in accurately representing how he feels. And you know, couple that with the fact that the moon in Capricorn inherently has a difficulty with self-expression because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which is the planet of restriction it can definitely be an overall theme that johnny depp might have difficulty just expressing himself in general or that when he expresses himself he has to do it very purposefully and for a particular use like in his acting Getting into the other aspects to Johnny Depp's moon, we have his moon sextile, his Neptune. Now the sextile is quite a gentle aspect. Neptune rules, in addition to many other things, creativity, uh, this sort of dreaminess, this ability to connect to inspiration or even connect to things that are beyond the realm of the seen such as, you know, like I mentioned, inspiration, but also spirituality or more creative spaces in one's mind. So like I said, that sextile is quite a gentle and also harmonious aspect. So this isn't really an indication of having a problem with substances. In fact, you know, it's been brought up in the trial that though Johnny Depp at a certain point struggled very heavily with substances. He also had a long history of using substances recreationally, like drinking and smoking weed, that were not detrimental to his well-being. It might have even aided his creativity or put him in a more emotionally relaxed space. And this aspect can just be an indication of his creativity in general 
and even the depth of his intuition. The trine is an aspect that is also harmonious and a little bit stronger than the sextile and Johnny Depp has a trine between his Mars in Virgo and his moon in Capricorn. Now Mars is considered to be a malefic planet but when it is aspecting a planet in a harmonious way like the trine it can really bring out the more positive, passionate, motivated side of Mars. So I mean we can even contrast Johnny Depp's relationship between Moon and Mars to Amber Heard's relationship between her Moon and Mars. Uh, we don't have Amber Heard's birth time, but without the birth time, you still get a good sense of those planetary positions and aspects. And in Amber Heard's chart, she has her Moon in Libra square, her Mars in Capricorn. Because of the square is an unharmonious aspect and creates a difficult relationship between two planets, that square between her Moon and her Mars is going to create a lot of tension between her emotional expressions and her relationship to her own emotions and those sort of more malefic qualities of Mars, which are anger and impulsivity. So this aspect could characterize Amber Heard's emotions as more prone to volatility, she could be more reactive, more angry, more impulsive, but because Johnny Depp's relationship between his Mars and his Moon is a harmonious one, his emotional life is characterized more so as being passionate, without that passion necessarily leading to volatility and impulsivity and anger. He can feel more impassioned and also be motivated again to really, because this trine is in Earth especially, and his moon is in Capricorn, be really motivated to do something practical with his emotional motivations. And then the last major aspect to Johnny Depp's moon is, like I mentioned, that square to his Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of overindulgence. It's the planet of expansion. And again, square is an unharmonious aspect. And so it's going to create a difficult relationship between the two planets that are forming that square. So, you know, expansion is a lovely thing and perspective and generosity, all beautiful things that Jupiter represents. But the square can make that relationship veer into the area of overindulgence, lack of restrictions, lack of boundaries. So this is something that is definitely indicative of Johnny Depp having a potential trigger to overindulge and get into an area of lack of self-control, especially to emotionally self-soothe. What is particularly interesting about this is that his Jupiter falls into his ninth house. And the ninth house in astrology actually does rule the second marriage. And I want to just make sure... How many times has Johnny Depp been married? Yeah. Amber Heard was Johnny Depp's second wife. So she would have an influence on his ninth house. Now, this Jupiter square his moon isn't the only thing in his chart that is indicative of a potential risk of substance abuse, but it is a pretty notable factor. And you could make the argument looking at this chart that with Amber Heard being his second wife, having a certain dominion over his ninth house, she could have triggered that Jupiter and specifically its square to his moon to cause him to lean into overindulgence as an emotional coping mechanism. The next thing I want to turn my attention to in Johnny's chart is his Mars. It is in Virgo in the first house. It is conjunct his Uranus in Virgo and conjunct his Pluto in Virgo. It is together in his first house with his Uranus. They are only two degrees apart. And then it's six degrees away from his Pluto, which is in the second house. His Mars is also square his Venus and trine his Midheaven. Now to start this off on sort of like a lighter note, looking at this Mars conjunct Uranus in the first house and his Leo ascendant, it finally sort of like clicked to me what Johnny's like sex appeal is. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, because he's like one of those people who you can argue is not necessarily like conventionally attractive, or at least, I mean, that's not really fair to say actually. Um, but from my perspective, because uh, I'm of the age where Johnny Depp it was introduced to me through Pirates of the Caribbean, in which I would say that role, he is not at all conventionally attractive, or at least not in my opinion, but he still had a definite allure to people, well, to girls in, in my class. And he does, you know, notably take on some of these darker roles like Edward Scissorhands or like other Tim Burton movies that he's been in, but he's also taken on like very conventionally attractive roles like 21 Jump Street and Cry Baby. <laughs> but this first house situation really paints a picture for his attractiveness through his charisma and through like a bit of an odd eccentric sex appeal and his dangerous nature with that Mars conjunct Uranus in the first house really seems to be a factor for his identity. And you know, his sex appeal, no matter what sort of role he's in, for whatever reason, seems to be at the forefront of people's conceptualizations of him. Case in point, the fact that there are so many girls in like my fifth grade class who had a crush on Captain Jack Sparrow. And we didn't even know about 21 Jump Street, right? <laughs> now, with his Mars sitting in the first house, he is what you would consider, or what Vedic astrologers would consider, a manglic person, which is basically a, a Mars dominant person because he has his Mars in an angular house. So you can definitely say that he is Mars dominant. There are plenty of ways to interpret Mars in the first house. I think it's notable to say that Mars in Virgo is really does not have the reputation of being aggressive. It has much more the reputation of being reactive. I mean, Virgo is a mutable sign. Virgo is also notorious for being like a good rule follower rather than an action taker or a leader. Virgo is a sign that really likes assignments, likes being told what to do. Virgo is considered the servant. So that's another way that you can look at a Mars in Virgo as definitely being motivated to react to people, to other people's needs, to be of service towards people, rather than being someone particularly aggressive or even personally motivated. Mars in the first house can definitely have the reputation of, you know, being quite outwardly aggressive even, uh, just because that Mars, like I said, it's a malefic planet and having it be part of your identity, it could be that that more aggressive nature of Mars is what makes itself present in one's identity. Like I said, there's a plethora of ways to interpret Mars in the first house. One of those, which I'm more inclined to believe in Johnny's case, is this nature of because the first house is indicative of how you interact with the world. A lot of times people with Mars in the first house have some sort of trauma response where because of the way that they experience the world in their early development, they learned that they need to be a bit more hypervigilant, ready to act. I would say that that's probably more accurate to Johnny Depp's Mars in the first house because it is in Virgo. Virgo isn't known for being particularly aggressive, but it is known for being quite analytical and observant. So having it in the first house, it can be that his nature of interacting with the world is always being physically prepared to take action based on his hypersensitive observations. His ascendant is in Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun and he has his sun in Gemini, which is a Mercury ruled sign and also in the 11th house. So with that, I would say that that's an indication of Johnny Depp being very socially savvy, savvy. and very socially observant and aware of his environment, which can speak to, again, that hypersensitivity. And we do have some background on his life to suggest that he might have been put in that position with you know, the traumatic upbringing that he had to need to be ready to act 
in response to stimulus, ready to protect himself, careful of the emotional temperatures of other people watching and controlling his behavior in order not to provoke people. Now, Mars conjunct Pluto is an interesting one. There can definitely be a side of Mars conjunct Pluto that makes people with this aspect very power hungry, emotional, potentially volatile, controlling. I think most notably there can be a strong manipulative tendency with Mars conjunct Pluto. And with both of these being in Virgo, I can definitely see that with Johnny potentially, whether it is, you know, connivingly manipulative or like I mentioned, you know, needing to take into account other people's emotional temperatures in order to predict whether you're going to face abuse from them and manipulating them in a certain way with the way that you behave in order to avoid that wrath. But there's definitely quite a dark side that can come with this Mars conjunct Pluto. And words like coercion, domination, violence do get brought up with this aspect. There's essentially a really intense energy in an individual who has this aspect. I would say that in his chart in particular, especially because while his Mars is in the first house, his Pluto is in the second house, it probably manifests more brooding and intense than anything. But I could definitely see it being triggered into this more malefic interpretation of this aspect. Through his birth chart, Johnny Depp can definitely be demonstrated as being quite a dark person. I know his dark humor has been something that's brought up in the trial a lot. And it seems like he has had quite a dark experience of the world. I mean, that's quite a, an intense fourth house, Scorpio, Neptune, and Lilith all in there. His eighth house is ruled by Pisces, which this is something that also sometimes can be an indication of detrimental substance use. I'm fairly sure that it shows up in Demi Lovato's chart as well. It can even be an indication, and I think this is quite strong also with Johnny's Neptune in the fourth house, this can be an indication of inherited issues with substance abuse, but also inherited creativity, inherited spiritual gifts. You know, all of these things are ruled under the same umbrella because they all have to do with this space in between reality and the ether. That's the place that substances can take us, but it's also the place that we exist in when we are tapping into our creativity, our inspiration, and our spirituality. Johnny Depp also has his part of fortune in Pisces in the eighth house. And the part of fortune is an indication of places or areas or themes that bring a lot of fortune into your life, a lot of luck and also monetary fortune. So it can be another thing that really shows that he was gifted with creative abilities and could make a lot of fortune for himself by engaging in and pursuing those creative activities and abilities. I wanna take a look now at Amber Heard's Mars. Just since we talked about Johnny Depp's Mars, it's interesting to sort of compare and contrast it to hers, especially because a big point of conversation in this case is the issue of primary aggressor. And first of all, this is a Mars combination, you know, Mars and Virgo trying her Mars and Capricorn. That would be really indicative of compatibility, on the surface at least. Compatibility is a very complex thing to read, so you can't really take one aspect into face value, but it's definitely a strong indication, Mars trying Mars, of sexual compatibility. And they at least had to have that, right? <laughs> and also just to tangent a little bit, there are other things that are like really strong indicators of compatibility between them, like the fact that they have their Venus's exact conjunct each other, hers at 25 degrees of Taurus and his at 26 degrees of Taurus. But back to Amber Heard's Mars, it is in Capricorn and a Capricorn Mars is considered exalted. So you compare and contrast it to Johnny Depp's Mars in Virgo, which is passive, takes cues, and this Mars in Capricorn is incredibly motivated. That's why it is exalted is because the Mars in Capricorn is very motivated and very much can have 
a lot of dominion over their actions, can be very self-contained, self-controlled. Her Mars is conjunct her Neptune. Both her Mars and her Neptune are square her moon. She has a harmonious sextile between her Mars and her Jupiter, and then a square between her Mars and her Mercury. Mercury is also opposite her moon. So actually, I know we started talking about her Mars, but really something that very much stands out is her moon and the aspects to it. First of all, we did brush up a little bit on her Mars square moon, but the Neptune square moon and the Mercury opposite moon can be a huge indication of distortion, meaning that her emotional life can be very subjective and can overtake her rationality. Her emotional life can be quite volatile and can essentially just like not be on the same page with her logic, not be on the same page with the concrete reality. Neptune square the moon can show a detrimental sort of subjectivity with one's own emotions. Neptune is all about subjectivity and when it is squaring a planet, that subjectivity that is imposed upon that planet can have unpleasant, less than desirable, unproductive consequences. The Amber Heard also had a very traumatic, unpleasant childhood. And with this aspect, it would be worth exploring if what she experienced in her childhood was a, a staunch denial of her emotions. People essentially gaslighting her into not being able to believe the validity of her emotions. And in adulthood with this aspect, it could manifest itself as then having a really hard time listening to other people essentially and feeling like you need to double down on how you're feeling even if that doesn't make sense even if that is then not validating and gaslighty towards whomever is trying to reason with you in regards to an emotional situation and emotional conflict. And then on top of that, having Mercury opposite Moon, it really shows that these two things, the mind, Mercury, and the emotional life, Moon, are not on the same page. They have a really hard time seeing eye to eye. And so on the one hand, when talking about Mercury, people with an aspect like this can have a really hard time actually incorporating their emotional expression into the way that they communicate, which I think is a criticism of Amber Heard. People tend to find her phony in the way that she communicates, call her out for fake crying or just like inconsistent emotional displays. And it would make sense that she might feel that she needs to compensate for this lack of natural incorporation of her emotional nature into her communication by putting it on a little bit. But with her Mercury in Aries, opposite her Moon in Libra, it would make sense that the way that she typically communicates is quite rational, even like harsh, blunt, severe, and doesn't have a lot of gentleness or nurture to the way that she expresses herself when communicating. And then on the other hand, considering this opposition as it affects the moon, there can be a huge difficulty in looking at one's own emotions with objectivity, infusing logic into the way that you experience your emotions. Another aspect that she has going on is just a very gentle sextile between her moon and her Saturn. So that, like Johnny Depp's Capricorn moon, that's also a little bit of that influence of feeling that you need to do something with your emotions, be productive with your emotions. So it's an indication of, you know, feeling promoted to act. But in general, the picture that Amber's moon paints is one of someone who has, or may have quite a volatile, subjective, distorted relationship with 
her emotions. And Moon in Libra is also just in general, not the most ideal position for the moon and sort of adds to the picture of someone who might have just been denied her emotion, but has a very deep and passionate, even volatile emotional life. And so feels then also the need to overcompensate in buying into her own emotions because it very well could be the fact that she is unsure of her own reality at times that she's not sure if she can believe her own emotional experiences and she might react to that by instead of playing into that doubt of herself feeling like she needs to aggressively campaign for people to believe her now it's worth noting we don't have the full picture of amber's chart we don't know what houses these planets fall into but you can see why looking at this information i have a heart for amber heard and what she's going through because she's she seems to be a victim to her own issues now back to her mars one thing just to mention real quick is her mars is square her mercury as well so that's a difficult little trio that we have going on here mars square mercury mercury opposite moon moon square mars these are all personal planets that are not getting along but mars square mercury i think can speak to these accusations that we've heard towards amber heard of her being quite uh verbally abusive to her assistant to johnny and again i mean her her mercury is in aries which is a mars ruled sign this would make a lot of sense that she would be blunt that she might have also very harsh opinions but she could be aggressive in her speech and potentially this could all come from a place of feeling like she needs to behave this way in order to survive you know as a self-preservation sort of thing that's a big theme with mars and a big theme with aries like I said, the Davison relationship chart that we have on this couple is not complete because we don't have an ascendant, we don't have Amber Heard's birth time, but I'm still gonna bring up sort of the high points of it. It's quite a heavily weighted Davison relationship chart. The majority of these planets are quite clumped together in one area, which is why it's especially frustrating to not have a birth time, to not know if potentially these are all in one house that would give more information but essentially we have uranus at 29 degrees of libra and then we have mercury mars sun and venus in scorpio then the moon in sagittarius neptune in sagittarius the north node in sagittarius that's a big fat stellium in scorpio and i mean scorpio does have a reputation for being so many things for being toxic mysterious sexual Scorpio is the sign that rules the underworld, the unseen, so it makes sense that it would have these connotations of being somewhat toxic. There's connotations of Scorpio being a sign that can show up as coercive, dominating, that there is a power issue with the sign of Scorpio. So these are all things that might have been present in the relationship. I mean, it is sort of just like speaking to what we're hearing of the relationship that it was highly emotionally volatile intense and that's all notable in the chart but there's some things that are more interesting about the chart like this moon in sagittarius conjunct neptune again this conjunction between the moon and neptune can speak to this difficulty in the relationship of subjectivity when it comes to the emotional nature of the relationship. Gaslighting is quite a strong accusation, but I would say that it is an accurate one for some of the content that's come out in the recordings presented in the trial. Diminishing of emotions, having someone question their own experience of something, you know, like whether it's valid for them to feel a particular way. Those are all markers of gaslighting, at least to the extent that I understand it. 
And when Amber is saying like, I hit you, I didn't punch you on that one recording, mocking him sort of for being a man and trying to claim that he is at all a victim of domestic violence. It's all quite gaslighty and definitely in that Neptune conjunct moon area of like, don't believe your own emotions or having difficulty believing your own emotions. Interestingly, this chart, and I mean, we don't have the Ascendant or the Midheaven or anything, but this chart is mostly full of quite harmonious aspects. It's got a lot of conjunctions because there is a big concentration of planets in one area. So a lot of things are conjuncting each other and a conjunction isn't necessarily a harmonious or unharmonious aspect. It can go either way. But the only two truly unharmonious aspects are coming from Jupiter, which is interesting because Jupiter is the ruler of this North Node in Sagittarius in this chart. And the North Node is a huge indicator of karma. And I usually use Davison relationship charts to interpret relationship karma specifically. But this Davison relationship charts, Jupiter is square this Neptune and moon. Again, we talked about moon square Jupiter in Johnny Depp's chart as an indicator of overindulgence in order to emotionally self-soothe. So it's interesting that that is already something that was present in his natal chart and then shows up in this relationship chart and with such a karmic factor to it. It's also especially emphasized because the square is happening between two signs that are Jupiter ruled, Moon in Sagittarius and the Jupiter in Pisces. So these are extra indications that this aspect in particular would show up potentially as substance abuse and overindulgence to the extreme. And Jupiter is also squaring Neptune. Neptune does have its substance connotations and Jupiter has its overindulgence connotations. So another thing emphasizing that. This is only scratching the surface of this chart, but this video is already pretty long. So I'm gonna close with just like some high points in terms of transits. And in relationship to this Davison relationship chart and transits, they have a Chiron in Aries here. And Chiron is currently in Aries. It's a transit that we're going through now. And I believe that it would really be forming a conjunction with this Chiron in Aries at 20 degrees. This Chiron is also retrograde in this Davison relationship chart, which is difficult. With Chiron being the wounded healer, when it is retrograde, there can be a difficulty with truly using Chiron's healing powers, potentially feeling, especially as it shows up in a relationship chart, feeling like you're more focused on your own wounds than your ability to heal the other person in this relationship. Chiron in Aries is actually a lot about being able to take care of yourself in order to take care of other people. Like putting your own oxygen mask on first. And the wounds that might come up with Chiron and Aries are that of imposter syndrome, you know, of feeling like you're not worthy of taking up space or being a leader, that you're not deserving. It can essentially be a quite insecure combination, Chiron being an Aries. And so these are the wounds that Johnny and Amber share in particular and what might have been brought out in their relationship, essentially an insecurity of them being enough. And also with Aries having to do with autonomy, individuality, there could have been a real difficulty in this relationship with feeling alone, a wound surrounding being alone. I don't know in what house this Chiron would fall in, in Amber's chart, but it does fall into Johnny's ninth house, which again, in addition to other things that the ninth house represents, it does represent the second marriage. This case has really taken the world by storm. One of the reasons why it might be such a prevalent moment now is because we are experiencing this Chiron in Aries as a collective, and these wounds are cathartically being mirrored to us in this case. Another huge thing is the fact that this whole trial is happening right in the middle of eclipse season. 
The North and South Node are in Taurus and Scorpio respectively. I mean, essentially, Taurus and Scorpio has to do with your money and other people's money. So the fact that this is specifically presenting itself in a civil case that is all about money, it just makes total sense. And the other themes surrounding this eclipse are, you know, these intense Scorpionic themes of trauma, things that are hidden, things that are talked about. We're really getting a big time look behind the curtain in these two actors' lives. Scorpio rules sex, Scorpio rules joint assets to become one. As much as this is a defamation case, so much of the themes are Scorpionic, intimate partner violence, trauma. Again, I don't know Amber Heard's ascendant or house placements, but we're getting a big time look at to both of their, their childhoods. And this eclipse is happening between Johnny's fourth and 10th houses, the 10th house being his house of public persona, the fourth house being his house of home, family, and foundation. Johnny is also going through his second Saturn return currently. His Saturn is at 23 degrees of Aquarius, and we are going through a transit of Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn has to do with consequences, responsibility. A lot of times Saturn returns or Saturn squares do show up as court cases or stressful events in which an authority figure is imposing upon you, imposing upon your life. And then just the fact that this is all happening during eclipse season with the South Node in Scorpio. Since Scorpio and the eighth house rule joint finances, court and civil cases especially are very much involved in those themes. Prison as well, the eighth house is representative of prison. I don't think anyone's gonna get any prison time here, although there would be I mean, I'm not a professional, but there would potentially be a case for Amber Heard getting some time based on perjury, but I don't know anything about that really. So yeah, I, I really just scratched the surface when it comes to the transits affecting this. I hope that I could at least communicate a fraction of just like how much it makes sense that all of these events are lining up with the current astrology. I'd love to know what your insights are on the trial, what you think of my interpretation of Johnny Depp's birth chart, their Davison relationship chart, and some of the transits going on at the time of this trial. I'd love to just know your thoughts in general on the case and the public reaction to the case. If you would like your birth chart interpreted by me, if you would like your Davison relationship chart with you and another person, interpreted by me. I offer those readings on my website ninabastrology.com as well as life coaching if you would like to work with me long term on your personal development along with my insights on your astrology. I have a monthly new moon newsletter that you can also subscribe to on my website if you would like my monthly insights into the current astrology. Subscribe to this channel for constant astrology content. And thank you so much to Ana Luisa for partnering with me in this video. Don't forget to check out the first link in my description and use my code MININA10 for 10% off your purchase at analuisa.com. But that is all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching, for sticking it out to the very end. I hope that you have a great rest of your day or night, and I hope to speak to you again very, very soon in one way or another. Thanks for watching. Bye.